and it was moving the 980 ton ship. They didn't have a lot of extra power available, so they had to keep the engine tuned as efficiently as possible. And that's why there's recording uh, uh, pipe, uh, recording instrumentation pipes on the engine. You don't find that on a regular steam engine. The, uh, when they're going to record the engine, they always add the pipes to them. They never leave it on the engine. It's a very unusual mechanism. The timing is 100 degrees and 80 degrees, and that means that it's not square like a normal steam engine. And why he did that, I don't know. But uh, I, I'm going to figure it out someday. I think it has to do with the center line of the piston and the center line of the crankshaft are not synonymous. And uh, perhaps he had to do that or he was constrained with, uh, with a dimension. This is an extremely compact engine. The base here is exact scale. The only thing, I didn't want to model the floor, so I made the floor out of Corian. It's 12 inches thick. It was all I-beams. It's all steel. I did the bulkheads because they were critical because what was unique about this ship was that it was only 10 and a half feet tall and a nine foot propeller. So in order to put the propeller in the center of the ship, he had to raise the engine up so it was not mounted on the floor like most steamships would have the engine. So this is an inter propeller, you know that the propeller was breaking the surface and they put it in a box so that it wouldn't splash the, or do anything. Right, right. Now did this set an angle? No, no, flat. straight out, it, right. Not a union joint. Um, so the, the ribs are strictly to scale, just the way the real one is, and, and you can, the roof on it was about, or the deck, I should say, and the land lumber, it sits right here. There wasn't very much room at all for a steam engine to go in the ship. This is extreme. And I decided I was going to build the engine and dedicate it to his memory. I said, this would be neat. So what does that mean? Well, he's the finest builder I ever met in my life, so I better do a damn good job when I did it. So I started out. And every piece I made, I tried to make it as perfect as I could make it. And, and I don't really remember what part I finished first, but one of them was the accumulator. And I remembered I finished the accumulator and I know it's going to rust if I don't do something and I said I should paint it. But it's the strangest thing. I, the hair went up on the back of my neck because I remember being in Emery's basement talking to him and he said the problem with paint is it covers the beauty of iron. And those were his words. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at this beautiful part, and I says, I'm not going to paint it. I'm going to leave it like that. And then I did the next part, and it also looked beautiful. And then I did the next one, and the next one, and the next thing I know, I said, my lands. He does the number. i got to get a pencil. Is, if you look at the crank throws, here, the throw crank pins are on boxes. And the boxes can slide on the throw arm, so what you have here is a variable displacement water pump. By sliding the boxes in towards the center of the leg, he decreases the stroke and increases the pressure. Yep. Now, uh, 
this is the part that the museum didn't understand when they had they have this engine and they they have it because of the hypocycloidal and this one the Bates uh, unit uses a uh, over center rod it's so unusual there um, there aren't any in existence that I know of I've talked to several experts at names with Corliss mm -hmm. and they all say the same thing my lands a real Bates Corliss. You can't find them. They were all melted down. There's a Bates Corliss in St. Louis, but it was modified. It doesn't have the toggle mechanism for operating the, the driver plate. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the only model that I know of of the uh, Bates Corliss, and it was built by Emery Camp. And he uh, uh, got the dimension from the The rest of the story is the governor. The first part of the engine that Emory built was the governor in his exact scale. And uh, he got a job during the Depression as a night watchman for the, for the Silica Brick Company. During the Depression, they were afraid of having people steal bricks at night in the brickyard. So they hired him as a night watchman. But he was really a farmer, very well mechanically my uh, they said you have no machining skills you know you, you know your background doesn't show it and he pulled the governor out of his pocket and mm -hmm. he said here I built this <laughs> and they hired right him this and he became their lead technical mm -hmm. pattern maker the best guy they had working for him and he, he was that kind of guy and uh, incredible model builder and he did, as I said, he did all the castings to the engine and uh, it's very unfortunate.